The Sony Nifty 50, the 50mm 1.8 Prime that's really been bothering me. So when I first moved over to Sony and the A7 III, a friend of mine had the 50mm 1.8. Uh, I borrowed it for a couple of hours, had a little play around, didn't use it in a wedding, but just wanted to test it out. Low light focusing and things like that. The things that I'd heard weren't great on it were the things that I tried to see if I could get ranked. I didn't love it. My friend also had the Zeiss 55 1.8, which I did try and I did love. And I do love. And it's probably my favorite in the 50, 55 mil focal range. It's also argued that it's one of the sharpest, but it is over 500 pounds, close to six, $700 in the US, and it's not cheap. And for something that doesn't come out of the kit bag as often as say my 85 mil prime or the 28 mil prime, which is being used to record me right now, it's just been bothering me that I never really tested this properly. And at the price of the time was 230, 250 pounds. That was just too expensive for a nifty 50. Um, when you're looking at the cheapest budget lenses for all manufacturers, it always seems to be the 50 mil 1.8, pretty much for the native mount. And I've always found them to be fantastic little lenses for the money. Sure, you get a bit of chromatic aberration and the focusing's not always perfect, but you can get great results from them and they're great to have in the kit bag at all times. Now, at the price, as I say, I wasn't jumping on this, but there was the Prime Day sale recently and I managed to nab this for cheaper than what they are selling for used. I paid £130 and I think it's about $130 in the US, uh, dollars in the US as well for the same deal. And that just made me think, well, when it's £90 for the Canon equivalent, which I loved and I always kept my Canon version, that's not too bad for Sony. Sony lenses aren't as cheap as Canon and Nikon. I thought this is definitely worth a look. So as you've already guessed, I grabbed one, it's here. Let's take it out of the box, see what it looks like, compare it to the 55. I know it's not going to be a patch on it and it's going to be a cheaper build, but what we really want to know is how good are the images compared to the 55? And can I get it to perform well at a wedding? So like all Sony boxes, they come in the signature orange finish, documents to the side and lens there. One thing I will say, it is a very cheap plastic build. It weighs absolutely nothing. Lens hood, nice size lens hood, and the very small 50mm 1.8. This is actually quite small. It's It weighs absolutely nothing, as I said. In the hand, you're not expecting anything in particular. Again, it's fly-by-wire focus, as a lot of the Sony lenses are. There are no extra buttons, autofocus, manual focus switches, no focus hold buttons, no nothing. Cheap plastic build, as you'd expect. And that's okay, as long as it performs well. Like all other Nifty 50s, not a lot of glass in there, but enough for the focal length and hopefully enough for how it should perform. Now, I don't mind if this performs a little bit slower than the 55 for focusing, as long as it gets its focus. If you're gonna save that much money and you're looking for your first step into primes, you're gonna look at the budget options. Now, my other video that just came out is for the Viltrox, the 85mm 1.8, which is also a stunning budget lens for a very good price. Third-party manufacturers aren't the way that everyone wants to go, but if you can get the good results from them, I don't care who makes my lenses, to be honest. So even with the lens hood on, nothing to it, absolutely fine. Let's pop it on the camera body and you can see exactly what it's like. And there we go, a little bit stiff to pop on there. Just unscrewing that, yeah, it's a very tight fit compared to all my other lenses, interesting. Uh, but there you can see it on the body, as you'd expect, all, all 50 mils are about this size for most manufacturers. Um, no issues whatsoever there really. As you can see there on the top down camera, because the barrel hardly comes out at all, it's a nice amount of room for your hand. Being it's so light and the a7 III is so light, um, it hardly feels like I'm carrying anything. Half the weight I think is actually in my <laughs> Spider Pro rigging uh, and tripod rig there, but hey ho. For what I paid, it feels good enough. I wasn't really expecting anything different. I knew it was plastic build and that's what you expect when you spend a hundred pound or a hundred bucks on a lens. What else do you expect? So my initial thoughts, nothing impressive about it to be honest. It was a little bit tight. It's very light. 
it's made of plastic, it's not weather sealed, I don't expect it to do anything amazing. But all that really matters is the quality of image that I can get out of this. Now I'm going to put it through its paces at a wedding, I'm going to have it alongside my trusty Tamron, so when I'm using that on my spare body I will have this and if I can pop off the odd shot without jeopardising anything. My faith isn't in this yet, so I want to try it that way first, report back with my findings and hopefully we can all see exactly what this can do. People have been asking me to give it a second chance, so here is its second chance. Let's go and see what it can do. <laughs> Okay, not bad, not bad at all. I'm actually quite impressed with this. Uh, let me just show you some of the results that I got. So as you can see, it's pretty good. The image quality and the sharpness that you'll get out of this isn't anything to be sniffed at and it's quite impressive in its own right. As I've already mentioned about the build quality, it's, it's a lot to be desired, but it is a budget nifty 50. That's exactly what it's described and sold as. Now I let it loose during the first dance as a first sort of test. I did a couple of test shots, but nothing major, just to see what I thought of it when it was under a little bit of pressure. Um, and I actually then took it out for the first dance and used it extensively during the first dance. And it nailed focus pretty much every time. It was a dimly lit barn. Um, it was dark, it wasn't optimal conditions by any sense. And it didn't actually miss focus for anything more than the other lenses that I use would. It pretty much got it every time. Now it gave me a little bit of confidence in it, enough so I would use it for the next wedding, which I did just over the weekend gone. Um, and I actually used it in tandem with the Tamron as I said I would, uh, for those key moments that I like to just snap away and I thought I can just have it on my hip, whip it out and take a few sort of duplicate shots to see how it fared. Um, and it actually come up with a nicer image than the Tamron on a couple of occasions. The sharpness of the lens is nothing to be sniffed at. It's, it's really good and it's exactly what you'd hope for. Now the focusing, the focusing, whether it be light or dark, is a little bit slower. For me as a wedding photographer, and that is what this review is from the viewpoint of a wedding photographer, it's probably not quick enough. It was okay, it wasn't an issue at any point that I thought, oh, I wish it was just a little bit faster or I missed anything. Um, but I probably would have been able to pop off a few more shots had it have nailed focus a little bit quicker. There was once or twice where it hunted for focus and it was perfectly lit daylight outside, nice bright sunny day. Um, in fact, some of the conditions were quite harsh and it 
for no reason at all just missed focus every now and then which that's the only frustrating thing I would say with this lens um, but as you'll see with this shot it was actually tricky to get focus for any lens and it nailed it each time the Tamron and this lens both nailed it uh, it's a very bright backlit sort of image and it's it was able to nail it without any concerns or anything to worry about there at all and it actually rendered it quite nice some of the other shots where I was able to get back a little bit like this shot here with them stood on the steps in front of the manor house it's a beautiful shot and I'm very impressed with everything the color reproduction the sharpness um, the only other thing to note other than the focus on this lens is going to be the chromatic aberration there is a slight issue with chromatic aberration in more shots than others um, now this shot of the manor house where I got as soon as I arrived I managed to go back into the trees and sort of frame it nicely um, but you can see on the leaves and on the roof of the house it's it's pretty bad it's, it's going to be it's not something again that I would use for those key shots but as a wedding photographer would I be happy to use it for some portraits and if all else fails and my lenses all break or got stolen or something horrific happened to my kit and I had to reach into the bag for this, would I be worried? No, I'd be quite happy to use it, quite happy to get out there, get the shots that I need and I know that the couple will be happy. Uh, the chromatic aberration is something really that only I would see as with all lenses, it's not something that my clients would pick up on. If it was to be blown up or it was to be a big image um, on the wall or in an album, then you might just see it and you might get someone pick up on it because it is quite strong in this lens. But it's what I would expect to be honest. It's something that you're gonna get at this price range. So would I recommend this lens? Yes, I think I would. I think I've changed my tune on it a little bit. I was very wary of recommending it for its slow autofocus, sometimes missing its focus and the chromatic aberration, the cheap build. There's a few things on there that weren't ideal, but then that was it 250, 280 pounds, the recommended retail. I'm sure you can buy it anywhere now for 150 pounds, 160 pounds, 160 dollars even. Um, but if you can pick it up in the Amazon Prime sale, close to 100 pounds or 100 dollars, or any other sale used, it's probably worth it. That's actually the sort of price where I think this lens should be. If you don't have a Prime, it's a great step into the world of primes. This and the Viltrox, which is the other lens I may have said was before this one, but I'm just doing a little bit more of a review on that one, and that should be the next video coming up. Uh, the Viltrox 85mm 1.8. That's a £300 or $300 85mm prime, which is also very good. And it's something that if you're thinking what are going to be my first step into the world of primes, if you check out my other reviews with the series of three, which is essentially a 28, the 55 and the 85, you can certainly consider this if you're starting out with a limited budget, the 28, the 50, and now there's a few options at the 85 mil range, which are worth considering, and they're all really quite good. I never got to use it for video. It's not something that I would use for video, but that's only because I just haven't got the time to get it out and review it properly. If it's something you want to see, leave a comment below and I will try and get it out there and use it for video work as well. So the 50mm 1.8 from a wedding photographer's perspective, it's pretty good. But for now, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it informative. If you do go ahead and get one, you can support the channel by clicking the link to Amazon below, purchasing it through there. If you do get one, let us know. And if you do take any images, we do keep asking, but send them in, anything you've got. We'd love to see the images you guys are taking with any of the gear that I've managed to review. Um, I'm genuinely interested, so please do send it in. Uh, any sort of tips and tricks you've got for these lenses as well and you want us to share, let us know. Thanks again for watching. Please do give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to be kept informed of our future videos. We've got lots more coming up, so do stay tuned. But until then, I will see you in the next one.